Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from the Raspberry Tech, and today we're going to be taking another look at an operating system for the Raspberry Pi, which is not only easy for the eyes, but you don't have to know the complexity of Linux just to use it. It's called Chromium OS is an open source project that forms Chrome OS itself. So that's what we're going to be installing. Let's get started. So guys, Chrome OS is mainly designed to run on low-end devices such as the Chromebook which shares a similar ARM processor. That's what made this port possible. So I found this originally by Reddit um, and they actually since then created a website for their project or for their cause. And in this website they actually have like all the supported hardwares, the download links, uh, most of all the most important link is the donate link. You know if you support their cause I, I highly recommend donating to them. Now from this website what we need is a couple of things. We're gonna need to download their image right now they're up to 0.4.1 which when you download this is out you actually get the 4.1 um, also we're gonna need WinSCP to transfer a file called um, the con Chrome dev config file then we're also gonna need Win32 disk imager to transfer the image over to the SD card so after you downloaded everything extract all the contents and you're gonna get this folder and this image that's about 7 gigs it actually takes a while to transfer so once you start transferring, have a cup of coffee, wait a little bit, and it should be back soon. Alright, here we're going to navigate to that folder, grab the image, make sure your SD card is selected, the F drive for me, and just hit right. It's going to delete all the files, so this is a little disclaimer, everything will be lost on the SD card, so there's no going back after this. All right, now that everything's transferred over, we could exit this program. Remember to download this, and we can move the SD card over to a Raspberry Pi now and get it booted. After you booted up Chromium, it takes a little bit to boot. So keep that in mind. A um, Couple of things to add. Did notice the internally built Wi-Fi does not work with this build yet. Uh, they'll probably be fixing it in the near future, but as for the 0.4.1, Wi-Fi does not work. So I actually have uh, USB Wi-Fi plugged in for now. All right, you don't want to sign in because we got some settings that we got to plop in and it won't let you sign in for the first time because of the time. You see right now it says 140, but actually the time is completely wrong and the date is wrong. So that's why you're going to get this, oops, something went wrong with signing in. Now, what I did before was reboot and actually it captured the new time after it started up and I guess it hit the NTP server. Another thing you're going to notice on this is uh, right now it says Raspberry Pi 2. I'm actually doing this on a Raspberry Pi 3. So you might keep that in mind. It does work for two and three and it's the same version and they both work. So guys, to find the IP for your Raspberry Pi, you might have to navigate over to your router and then see which one captured the newest DHCP. Um, usually it should print out um, an IP address for your Raspberry Pi. Now to log in, the username is Kronos and the password is also Kronos. From here, the first thing we should do is actually set the date. So date dash S and today's date is 03 16 2016. If I spell things correctly, it should work. Now, oh man. The root password is Kronos. Now that I set the date, a lot of the stuff will start kicking in because it knows the date is correct. The time, you don't have to really worry about. Once you reboot the system, it should automatically just pick up the new uh, time. Now, the next step is to actually, if you have a Raspberry Pi 3, you would need to do this step. But if you have a Raspberry Pi 2, you could skip this step. Or well, the image that ships with the device is set to 1 gigahertz. Now, the Raspberry Pi 3 could do 1.2 gigahertz, so we're going to clock it back up. First thing we're going to do is make a temp file. Make dir 
temp. Okay, so now we have a CMT folder and a temp directory. Next, we're gonna mount sudo mount dev mmc blk 0p12, the 12th partition on the disk, to temp. Now, if I cd into temp, you're gonna see that there's a config file. sudo vi config.txt. And you're gonna see that ARM frequency is only at 1000. Let's go to a place that we want to change it. Hit the letter I for insert. Delete that, I mean add two. Delete the zero. Escape to get out of editing mode. Colon WQ for write and quit. Once that is done, the next reboot, you're gonna get the 1.2 gigahertz which helps, I actually noticed the difference in speed. Now, the next thing, since we have the IP address and everything, we are going to need to use WinSCP. Navigate over to SCP over here in our host name, 192.168.1.77. Username is Kronos. Kronos is the password and Login. It's going to search for a host. Yes, accept. Here we are going to need to navigate over to the downloads folder. Our Lenny, where I downloaded the Chrome underscore dev.config. And I'm just going to transfer it to a directory we're working on. And I'm going to hit upload. Okay. Now, if I go back into my putty session, ls ls back to the original directory you're going to see chrome dot underscore dev dot config all we have to do is sudo move chrome underscore dev dot conf to etc directory oh if you run into this problem you're going to have to remount so sudo because it's a read-only system i forgot option remount underscore rw and I believe that's it. Let's, oh, up doesn't work either, so you can't do any shortcuts. You have to type out everything. There you go. Now that that's transferred over, we could sudo reboot. Okay, if you are running into this error where it says your profile could not be opened correctly, we're gonna have to go back into PuTTY and um, fix that up. So now everything's all working. You see, if, if you take a look at the clock, the time actually changed. And here, you can just sign into whatever account you have. This is actually a really pretty operating system. Um, if you're hooking this up to a TV or you're hooking up to a big screen, it's actually very functional and very minimal to a point where you don't really need to know any code. Because we're doing a port, that's why we needed to do all these configurations and stuff to get this thing going. But in general, Chrome OS or Chromium OS is actually a very beautiful operating system. And you can do a lot with it. Um, once you get into the Chrome store, you can start downloading applications, games, and stuff like that just to make this work like it should. You could download YouTube plugins, you could download uh, I don't know, you gotta look it up, but there's a lot of things you can download. You can even get Word and Office uh, Suite from Microsoft to work on this thing. So um, if you're very interested in just productivity, uh, easy simplicity usage and stuff like that, Chrome OS might be a ver better variation for the Raspberry Pi for you guys. Um, but you do lose, the, you, you completely opt out on what the development board is about, which is the GPIO pins or getting robotics to work and stuff like that. That completely goes out the window. This is just a dedicated operating system for um, desktop use only, you could say. Again, um, this whole operating system spawns on a low-end system from uh, the Chromebook itself. So whatever you find in the Chromebook or if you even own a Chromebook, this is almost identical to it. After that was done, I just did a quick reboot. Now, before we log in, you see how there's a profile error could not be loaded behind? We're gonna have to fix that. Um, only some versions have it, not all versions have this problem. I think it's because of, it's my Raspberry Pi 3. 
That's kicking this error. So we're gonna head straight back to Putty and fix this error. If you want to and you're more courageous, you could actually hit Control Alt F2 and do it directly off the Raspberry Pi. But uh, I'd like to take the Putty approach, it's easier to record. Once again, we return back to the Putty session. I can actually close this out now because I don't need that. Kronos. Login as Kronos and password is Kronos. What we want to do is move home Kronos default. And this is all done before you actually logged in on the Raspberry Pi itself or on Chrome, Chromium OS itself. To home slash Kronos. We're gonna keep a backup of it just in case something fails, but once that is done, you could reboot. Next time you start to boot up the system, you're gonna notice that it boots up really quick compared to the first time where I was still trying to guess extract files or load files and place them where they're supposed to be. Now you're gonna notice as soon as I boot up, you're not gonna see that profile error message anymore because we just got rid of it. Here, this is the login screen where you could actually just add, browse as guest or add another person. Um, you can do whatever you want with it. Right now I'm gonna browse as guest. It's gonna open everything, just a generic version of whatever I have in here. Um, it's not going to save the account, but you're going to notice that everything runs really quick. Even YouTube works really quick. So I'm going to click on a trailer. See how smooth it is? I'm having no issues with this. Also, I could place it in theater mode and it still runs at that rate. Whatever they did to the graphic drivers, it, it got this to work really well. You see, full screen, not a problem. And this is running right off the browser itself. I'm not, I don't have any uh, uh, OMX player or anything on here. Again, if you're not familiar with Chrome, you could actually go to a lot of the places where, like the Chrome store. I'm not sure if I could do this on um, guest mode, but let's find out. There's a Google search, Chrome web store. Usually I should have a link on the bottom left, but I think again, it's because it's guest mode, it doesn't give me that link. But here you could download all the applications that you want, remote desktop, uh, Postman, Google Play uh, for movies and stuff like that. There's extensions, there's different themes if you want to change how the how Chrome looks. Um, if you wanted to look at like Word, um, there's, here you go, Microsoft Word Online, available on Chrome, I could click on that. I'll add it to my Chrome bar. But again, I, I don't know how far I'll take with guest mode. Oh, okay, so you're gonna notice these links do work. I actually added on my regular account, but I think because guest mode doesn't allow me to do a lot of the stuff. But you're gonna notice everything still works. It runs very smooth. It's like buttery smooth. It looks really pretty and it gets me to wherever I need to. If I just needed to use a browser or if I needed to use uh, some games or some apps, you see it says browsing a guest. It's a wonderful operating system and it's just gonna get better from here, especially now that you have the Raspberry Pi 3 clocked at 1.3 gigahertz, uh, 1.2 gigahertz. It runs so smooth. Thanks for watching my video. I actually had a lot of fun making this video because I had to do a lot of stuff to figure out how to get things going. This wasn't working, that wasn't working, so a lot of Googling in my part. I actually had to read a lot of stuff about this just to get this uh, project going. So I had a lot of fun doing that. Um, I, while in my research, I also discovered that we could install Firefox OS on here. So I'm gonna be taking a look into that and probably getting that video out also. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, please hit that little subscribe button. That helps me a lot. Also gives you notification when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, 
Actually, it hurts. <laughs>